As I understand it, the Titanic hits the iceberg at 11.40 p.m. That means that a lot of people would have been sleeping in their cabins. Where exactly are the third-class cabins? They are right down in the depths of the hull of the ship. They are the lowest passenger decks. And because of this, the third-class cabins will be most in danger. The flooding was going to reach those people first. And this is a breakdown by the class they were traveling in of who died. All right, what does it show us? Well, I find it quite shocking. 62% of first-class passengers survived. Second-class passengers, 42%. Third-class passengers, only 26% survived. 26%? Yeah. It's really shocking. It is. There were 144 women in first class. Only four died. Only four of the first-class women died. Yeah. So that tells me if the unknown child was traveling first class, he was most likely to survive. Yes, I agree. Imagine the boy's mother on that fateful night. It's just before midnight. She's waking up her little boy. The terror. And maybe she's been separated from her older children. She's trying to regroup her family. Panic sets in. Many third-class passengers who perhaps don't speak English, not knowing exactly what's going on, the testimonies of people that were there, they talk of chaos. The running around and trying to get onto lifeboats, of families who are separated, the screams of people in the water afterwards, it would have been harrowing and terrifying in equal measure. The eyewitness reports give a chilling sense of what it was like as the ship sank that night. There fell on the ear the most appalling noise that human beings ever listened to. Cries of hundreds of our fellow beings struggling in the icy cold water, crying for help with a cry we knew could not be answered. We tried to sing to keep the women from hearing the cries. Those sounds will be one of the things the rescued will find it difficult to efface from memory. It was said that on the night the Titanic sank, the water was 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which is below freezing. How long would someone who didn't die from shock last in those kinds of temperatures? Experiments have been done on this. What happens to a body in water when you lower and lower the temperature? At first, the body tries to generate heat by shivering. At around 95 degrees, the heart rate, the breathing, and blood pressure all start to increase. But as the temperature drops further, the body tries to compensate by lowering the heart rate, the breathing, and the blood pressure. This cooling, if not checked, leads to disorientation, unconsciousness, and death. Wow, so how long would that have taken? Sadly, not very long. It takes about 15 minutes for hypothermia to set in in an adult. You could be dead in about 30 minutes. For a child, it would be much shorter. 